Welcome to the new Muslim workshop. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the new Muslim workshop. My name is Mahmoud, and today we're starting a new series called Reality Check. And today's reality check is for Muslim sisters who have recently come into Islam. So the subject matter is revert sisters and their marriage prospects. And what I would like to do is convey to you some advice uh, that comes from my experience, that comes from experience uh, of friends of mine and family and just the general collective experience of Muslims. So the first thing you have to know is that you cannot marry a non-Muslim. Once you've become Muslim, you can only exclusively marry Muslim men. I will leave you to research the reasons why that is the case, but you cannot marry a Christian, a Jew, a Buddhist, a Hindu, a Rastafarian, an atheist, or whatever else. Number two, please, once someone has come and asked for your hand in marriage, you need to perform your due diligence. And that means that you need to go and ask about that person, and you need to give yourself a good chunk of time to research and investigate to see if that person is a good person, if that person follows the teachings of Islam, that person prays in the masjid, that person give, pays their zakah and sadaqah, that person uh, has good ethics and manners. So the criteria for uh, getting married to someone was laid out in the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ for men. And the, the hadith, we can make an equivalency for women uh, and, and a woman can use it because it, it, it kind of works out. So the hadith is uh, narrated by Abu Hurairah where the Prophet ﷺ said, a woman is married for four things, her wealth, her family status, her beauty, and her religion. So you should marry the religious woman, otherwise you will be from the losers. And this is uh, from Sahih al-Bukhari. So this is a Sahih hadith. And it's very, very well known. Now, the same can be said for women. When a man comes to ask for a woman's hand in marriage, uh, she might marry that person because they are wealthy or because they come from a good family or because that person is good looking or because that person is religious. And the best thing you can do is marry someone because they are religious. Now, that doesn't mean that you cannot have combinations of that. You can have combinations where a person is rich, is good-looking, and is religious. I mean, and obviously the, the perfect combination is having somebody who is rich, good-looking, from a good family, and religious. But this kind of like the complete package, but that doesn't mean that you always get that. You might find somebody who's a good person from a good family and is religious. However, he's not very rich. Or he comes from a middle-class family, which is fine. So, we've made the equivalency, a woman can marry a man because of these four things. However, the best trait that you can find in a person is that they, come, they are religious, that they fear Allah. And that's important because if they fear Allah, then they will fear Allah in you unless they are hypocrites. So, if someone fears Allah, however, they don't fear Allah in you, then they are not practicing Islam properly. That doesn't work. A person who practices his religion properly will follow all the teachings of Islam and that means that he will treat his family well. This goes to the hadith of the Prophet والسلام, which is خيركم, خيركم خيركم The best of you is the one that is good to his family and I am the best of you to his family. So, what do you need to do? Sister, once um, someone comes and asks for your hand in marriage, you need to go to the sheikh of the masjid that that person frequents and you need to ask his advice regarding that person. You need to investigate, you need to give yourself um, a few weeks, a few months to verify that that person is a good person. So you ask the sheikh of the masjid, does this person come for Fajr? Does this person come for Isha? If he's working and he can't come during the, the, the periods of time where he's working, that's fine. Go and ask 
if that person comes in the weekends? Does he perform his five compulsory prayers? Does he perform it in the masjid? Because that is the default for Muslim men. The default is that you pray in the masjid. I'm not trying to overburden you with information. What I am trying to do is give you the basics. You should investigate anyone that comes and asks for your hand in marriage because you don't know what their intentions are. It's not just for you to be married to them. What other intentions do they have? What ulterior motives do they have? That person could be great, could be a brilliant person, and they don't have any ulterior motive except to be married and to fortify themselves from the outside world. They, they want to have a family, they want to have children, they want a good wife. That's fine. However, that doesn't mean that everybody that comes to ask for your hand is going to be from that category of people. So you need to perform your due diligence. They need to figure out if this relationship that they are going to be a part of is going to be a successful one. So what you need to do is make sure that it's successful by investigating and finding out if that person is a good person. And what you do is if you've exhausted the means with, with the Sheikh, what you do then is you go and ask the sisters in the masjid to go and ask their husbands. Men talk amongst themselves just as much as women talk amongst themselves. And if a person has a bad reputation, then that is going to show up. So if a sister cares about you, if a sister cares for you to maintain your deen, then she will ask her husband to ask about this person. If that person prays their salah in the masjid, if that person pays his zakah on time, if that person was never... Uh, in any sort of dispute with any of the other members of the masjid. And I'm not talking about like, you know, there are certain disputes that are, that happen, you know, like between people, I bought something from that person, that person didn't uh, give me everything that I asked for. And so there a dispute happens. If that person was wronged and showed intelligence and patience and a virtue when dealing with the other person, being honorable, is something that people recognize. And if he is an honorable person, a person that is known for being truthful, a person who is known for being fair, um, he's not a traitor that tricks people, because, you know, that always leaves a bad taste in people's mouths. And what that means is that if he's willing to cheat somebody in a trade, then what does that mean? What is he going to do to his life partner? So, sister... I don't want to make this video too long. I just sort of want to make a concise piece of advice. Before you marry anyone, verify their motives. They might want to marry you to get the green card. They might want to marry you to get a citizenship. They might want to marry you because you are wealthy. They might want to marry you because you are beautiful. But that doesn't mean that they are the best fit for you. That doesn't mean that this person is going to help you stay on the straight path. There, that doesn't mean that that person is going to help you improve your deen. It doesn't mean that that person is going to be a good father. And it doesn't mean that that person is going to treat your family well. Because when a marriage happens, it's not just a marriage between one person and another person. It's, it's in fact a marriage between a family and a family. That's what happens. And so when these two families join and he comes from a terrible family. That is not going to encourage your family uh, to believe that you've made the correct decision. And it's not going to encourage your family to come to Islam. And ultimately, for someone who has become Muslim, the best thing that could ever happen for them is for their parents to recognize they made a correct decision and for them to follow along and become Muslim as well. So sister, please perform your due diligence. T be patient. Be patient. And don't be afraid to say no. Even if he comes from the Middle East, he comes from a rich family, he will show you the world. No. It's not good enough. 
That person has to be a Muslim who practices his deen, who has a good reputation, and who, let's say, if you live in the U.S., already has a citizenship or already has a permanent residency, uh, um, what do you call it, uh, a green card. Or if you're in Canada, the same thing, the person has a PR and doesn't need you for anything. He, he's independently wealthy or has, he has enough to, to, to open a house, iftah bayt. So that's kind of man Whoever is able to take care of, a, of another person, they, of a wife, then they should get married. So, sister, please, be careful because this could make or break your deen. Getting married to the wrong kind of person will break your deen. In some cases, إِلَّا مَنْ رَحِمَ رَبِّي Except for certain women who have exceptional uh, belief, alhamdulillah. However, why even put yourself in that position? Why put yourself in a position where it's like a ticking time bomb? Some men, once you marry them, they become better. They become better Muslims. But why even put yourself in that position where you are the one that is driving the other person to become a, a better Muslim? What you need is a man who maybe has a higher understanding of the faith, who is, has more knowledge than you, so he can help you out. He can be a fount of knowledge. He can help you become a better Muslim. He can help you reach Jannah. That's the dream. And in some cases, it doesn't need to be a dream. It can be a reality. If you do your due diligence and if you prepare for success. That's what we want to do. Okay? The, there is a saying for the people who, you know, the, the DIY guys, the do-it-yourself people, who says, measure twice, cut once. It's measure twice. Take your time. See if that person is the correct kind of person. Don't prolong it for years, obviously. But if you have verified that they are, they pray regularly, that they do not indulge in things that are haram, they do not gamble, they do not fornicate, they do not, they're good people, they fear Allah, they have knowledge, they have a good reputation, they are honorable, then you're, you're good. You've done what you can, and the hadith goes, aqilha wa tawakkal. Okay? You've done your part, as per what Allah requires, everything is in Allah's hands, however, you've done your part, and Allah does whatever Allah wills. If Allah wills that that person lose their faith, it's not, it's not because you didn't do your due, due diligence. It's because Allah decided this. And if Allah decides that that person becomes a, um, becomes a means for you to enter Jannah, then Alhamdulillah, you've done the best you can and Allah has rewarded you for it. And that doesn't mean that you know, a person who, whose husband uh, falls off the wagon uh, is being punished by Allah rather it is ibtila it is a test from Allah because it does happen it does happen so I hope this video is helpful I hope this video is informative and I'm telling you these things not to ruin your chances of getting married rather I want you I want to improve your chances of having a successful marriage Thanks for listening. Sister, please, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Please understand, I am not trying to make your life difficult. On the contrary, I am trying to make your life much better than what it is right now so that you can have a, a successful marriage, so that you can have happy children, and so that your deen is intact and fortified. Jazakumullah khair for listening. Um, I hope it works out for you, sister. I hope that you can maintain your faith and your deen and that you and your future husband have the best of marriages and the most pious of children, inshallah. Uh, if you enjoy this kind of content, 
please consider uh, subscribing. Please consider hitting the notification bell. And assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.